Let me share my screen. Just a quick shout out to everybody uh, that if you can confirm that you can see my screen. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited to have you all here um, today to talk about and to learn about what is a real estate syndication. And I'm going to get into that, um, uh, you know, in, in a few moments here, but uh, I will go through a few logistics here in, in, in just a moment to make sure that we are um that we're all on the same page and we kind of you know limit any of the dis distractions and and be on the same on the same page as we go through this for the next uh you know 50 plus minutes or so but you know i'm chris price for those of you who i don't know i will get a little bit more into who i am and where i came from and who is this guy talking about wealth mindset and real estate investing um but before i do that um i'm the host of this meetup um, and, uh, you know, we, this is our second meeting that we've had. And I will also let you know that, you know, in addition to, um, you know, my, 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 the work that I do professionally, I also am a, uh, am a, a entrepreneur and, and I'm a multifamily, uh, apartment building investor. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a moment, but before I do, I like to get into, uh, a quote, and this is one of my favorite quotes. Um, that from from Andrew Carnegie, and it says 90% of all millionaires become so through owning real estate. More money has been made in real estate than in all industrial investments combined. The wise person or wage earner of today invests his his money in real estate. And so we'll, we'll we'll start with and by leaving that in your mind as we go through the presentation today. But before I do, just a couple of logistics for us all here, so that we can make sure that we uh, can get everything out of out of today's uh, presentation and discussion. First and foremost, just logistics. You know, please mute your lines when you are not speaking. Um, if you could hold your questions until the end of the presentation, that would be great. But I understand if something is burning, uh, please do um, raise your hand or speak up. Um, you know, we can make sure that we um, you know address something if if we cannot move past it. Um, as I mentioned, this presentation will be recorded. The materials um, for of this presentation, of course, do not constitute an offer or any solicitation to purchase any real estate securities or anything along those lines. This is information only and should not be considered, you know, any business, financial, or or legal advice. All right. So what uh, are we going to cover today? We're going to learn a little bit about me very briefly. This isn't about me, but I just want to make sure that everyone can can know who they're speaking to and and who they're connecting with here. But then we're gonna go into some specifics about what is a real estate syndication. We're gonna talk about how does a real estate syndication work? Who's involved in real estate syndications? What is the, the, the role of the real estate syndication group or this fancy word, you know, general partnership group? Um, we're gonna talk about, you know, what, what is the role of, of passive investors and what, what do they do and how does that whole thing work? What are the benefits of real estate investing you know we heard we hear about them but what are they can you know how can we understand this a little bit more to make it a little bit more tangible for for us we'll, we'll talk a little bit about um the benefits um but also of course we have to we have to balance the talking about the benefits with some of the risk or challenges with investing in, in real estate um syndications we'll talk about the eligibility uh, criteria for investing in real estate syndications as well as some of the important rules that govern these types of investments um how and then and then of course with all of that information some some of you may have peaked interest and say wow this is really interesting but how do i invest in a real estate syndication we'll talk a little bit about that um as well and then we'll talk uh, some about how to fund your deal or excuse me how to fund real estate uh, syndication investments and then we'll we'll round out with uh just how we can stay in touch all right so let's get down to it so a little bit about me so i'm a husband uh, of i'm a father to allison price a father to uh zoe and kaden price uh, a son to caswell and cheryl price a brother to my my brothers matthew 
and Jeremy and my sister Brianna, and I'm a corporate leader today. I work for a large uh, pharmaceutical company and a, I'm, I'm a pharmaceutical executive, and I'm an active accredited real estate investor and entrepreneur, as I mentioned earlier. And in, in terms of my professional resume, um, in my formal education, you know, I'm I'm an award-winning pharmaceutical executive with over 19 years of experience, and you know, doing various different things within the industry. In particular, um, gaining and building my expertise in marketing operations, medical operations, and sales operations over the the years that I've been in the industry. It's hard to say 19 years. It feels so crazy, but it has been a while. I, I have uh, a certi I'm a certified Lean Six Sigma Green Belt. I have my MBA in healthcare management, a master's certification in applied project management. And before all that, I um, went my did my undergrad at Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York, where I played Division One football, and I was a was an All American uh, football player uh, in in college, and had a great time doing all that. But again, this, 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 the formal education is one thing. And another quote that I like to talk about in that, and I, why I applaud all of you for being here today is that another famous uh, speaker and successful business person came up with this quote. And the quote goes, formal education will make you a living. You know, going to school and getting a good job and doing all those things will make you a good living. And kudos to, to all of you for that. But the self-education is what will make you a fortune. And Jim Rohn, again, is the is the famous uh, speaker who who the late Jim Rohn is, is uh, who came up with that quote. And again, I, I applaud all of you for taking an hour out of your day to show up here um, to learn about something that you may know a little bit about or may not know anything about, but you're coming to learn and to grow and, and build on your self-education. And for me, my self-education, um, I, I want to I tell you a little bit about this just from my ba background perspective so that you can understand. So I've been a real estate investor for 10 years, um, primarily in single family rentals. Um, I, I, I've, I've rented to over 24 tenants in, in that time. Um, I have uh, I have uh, invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in multifamily syndications, and today am uh, a partner in over 330 units. Um, I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in real estate uh, funds and the and real estate funds, which we can cover off in another topic, or is just a, a, a way where. Uh, where investor invest, investment groups put together multiple different types of assets to um, package up and help investors um, invest in more diversified alternative assets, if you will, to be able to increase um, the, their opportunity for returns on their investments. I'm also a land investor. I have I have over four acres of land down in the Greensboro, North Carolina area. Um, and, and in addition to that, um, I have uh, invested uh, considerably in my in my knowledge of, again of you know wealth mindset and real estate investing in particular. I'm a part of the Cash Flow Tactics Acceleration Mastermind, um, which talks a little bit about both real real estate investing. And it talks about uh, the, the dual asset strategy of using ca high cash value life insurance policies in combination with real estate real estate investing, which will be a topic that we talk about along the journey here um, uh, within our meetup. I'm also um, a, a a member uh, of the Michael Blanc uh, Dealmaker Mentorship Training and Coaching program um, that that I've invested in specifically focused on helping um, folks build their real estate syndication business. And of course, um, I am the host of Wealth Mindset and Real Estate Investing Meetup, which we're all a part of today. But it it doesn't stop there. It, it all started with uh, with a few key things. And one of those things was how did I how do I go ahead and and just you know, break through and 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 open my mind up to different things. And the the book on the top left, Rich Dad Poor Dad, is the is the book that really went ahead and sort of opened my mind to the things. 
and and so that from from there it really set off um an explosion in, in my mind around uh, things that i had no clue about from a from an investment standpoint you know all the things that i thought i knew um that i realized that i i, I was i was wrong or had no idea about was just a fascinating um uh, you know sort of revelation to me but that actually drove me deeper down the rabbit hole and helped me learn more about building my financial literacy building my financial intelligence so that I could be able to take action and set a different direction um, for myself and my my family uh, from a from a wealth building perspective. And when when I talk about this with folks, I I like to really cover off on you know the our why when and when I say our why I mean that and my my wife Allison we we talk about our why our why behind this um, because this is really uh, the driving force that 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 helps us look at why we're going where we're going and how we're going to get there first and foremost you know our why is being able to get out of the rat race the idea of of trading our time for dollars until we're 65 years old and then we can you know quote unquote retire and then live the rest of our lives is not what's of interest to us we want all that right now and we want to make sure that we can we can position ourselves to do that in addition to that we talk about financial freedom and financial independence that means if we choose to continue working our W-2 jobs, then we can we can do that. But we have the choice to do so because we would be financially free and financially independent to to choose to do what we want on our terms, on our time, and how we want to do it. We want to spend more time with our family and friends, those people that are important to us. We we feel that it's really critically important to build generational wealth. Um, for for our kids and our kids' kids, and one day down the line, we wanna we wanna be those folks that our lineage is talking about that help you know set and transform the 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 trajectory of the family for generations. We want to build communities locally and abroad, and we want to make an impact on the world. We obviously, you know, like like many of you, we want to be able to travel the country and the world more than what we're doing. And we want to be able to, to do that by investing in assets that create passive supplemental income and ultimately having that passive income from our investments offset our earned income from our W-2 jobs. And then that financial freedom and financial independence goal will be check done. And we want to, of course, be able to be those folks that we can support immediate extended family. Think about the idea of Shark Tank for your family. You know, someone has a great idea, um, you know, that that you want to help support and get them off to the ground. We we thought it would think it would be really nice to be able to to do that and to to help our family in, in that way and more. We and then we have visions of doing some other things around small business investments and other types of portfolio diversi diversification that can protect us from the stock market. So that's a little bit about me. And I like to start with this during the presentation just so people know know who, again who is the person on the other side of the screen here while we're talking but now let, let's talk a little bit about why we're all here today which is to learn about what is a real estate syndication and and I, when I first heard about this and, and I started learning about it, I was like how in the world that there, there's how did I how didn't I know this you know driving around growing up in you know in part in the east coast and dr driving through the city and um driving through other large cities and seeing all these buildings and wondering who or how are these things owned well you would be very or maybe not impressed or 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 shocked you but the, the way that these buildings are are purchased is essentially this a send a real estate syndication is when a group of investors pools their money together to jointly purchase a large real estate property and 
the the cool thing about this is is that these properties it may be things like apartment buildings you may have driven somewhere in the south or in the midwest like in florida and seen these big rv parks with um with people's trailers or or rvs parked on on these grounds that look like major like like a concert venue those are Folks, uh, those are owned oftentimes by syndication groups. Land can be uh, purchased as a part of a syndication, office buildings, hotels, self storage facilities. You know, we all like our stuff. And sometimes when we like our stuff, some people need a little extra room to put that stuff in. Self storage facilities are another um, another resource or or real estate vehicle that people syndicate so that investors can um, pull their money together to acquire um, these assets. Assisted living facilities. Think about what's what's commonly known as this silver tsunami that's that's coming as as P, as our our baby boomer generation is is aging and moving into um, some you know uh, assisted living facilities or communities. Um, these these types of facilities also are things that can be syndicated. And the important thing about this, guys, is that there are many different uh, asset classes, if you will, um, um, from a real estate syndication perspective. The one that I'm going to focus on today for the purposes of our discussion is going to be on uh, specifically around multifamily, but generally speaking, the rules apply um, across each of these different syndication asset types. So who's involved in a real estate syndication? There are really two key players. There, there are more, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but the two key players that are involved in real estate syndications are the limited partners, aka the passive investors, and then there are the general partners. These are also known as the syndicators or the sponsors or the operators or key principals that are all the, the, the folks that help to, to drive the deal. And we'll get into some specifics about what it is these folks do. So when we think about the the real estate syndication group or the the the, the general partners or the sponsors this this group is really the key to driving the investment these are the people that are finding the deal they are in contact with the brokers they are building relationships with those brokers they are um you know running reports and looking at properties um, that on the various different real estate um, or commercial real estate inve investment sites like LoopNet or like Crexy or others, they are underwriting the deal. And what underwriting is, is just a fancy word for saying they're doing a thorough analysis on, on that deal to determine if it is right for their investors. They're looking at all the numbers. They're looking at what the opportunities are for um, being able to increase the value of the property. They are looking at the rent rolls and they're, they're understanding all those different dynamics that play into where the property is today and where that partnership group can bring it to as a part of the investment. They're doing the due diligence. So once once uh, the process is moving along and uh, and letters of intent are accepted and the, the progress is moving along within within this, they're completing some due diligence. They're going to the property. They're looking at who you know they're looking at the opportunities in the property you know what was stated and what was looked at on paper was one thing but when we go there and look at the property um in person we when we we're accompanied by a, a property manager and an inspector and we're looking at those things we're conducting thorough due diligence to determine whether or not this investment truly is something that is an opportunity or if it should if we should part ways and walk away from from it and and move on to another deal there, this general partnership group is arranging the financing. They're working with the lenders. They're 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 getting uh, they're raising funds from the passive investors, which we'll get to in a moment. They are also um, developing and executing the business plan because the big deal, as it relates 
to multifamily uh, investments in particular is about increasing what is known as the, the value of the property or the net operating income. And part of that is all built on the business plan. So what do I mean by that? I mean that when when someone looks at a, at a property and an investment opportunity, they're they're able to determine based on based on a lot of market research and analysis, hey, the property that we're looking at based on our underwriting is actually two hundred dollars under market in terms of rent, meaning that a building just down the road, let's say, for example, is charging a thousand dollars per month for a, a, a yearly lease. But our building that we're trying to buy is only charging eight hundred dollars a month for a 50 unit building. Now, in addition to that, th this the 50 unit building that we're trying to purchase doesn't charge for parking. They don't they they um, they are paying for the heating for the building. They are paying for um, the trash removal and those types of things, and they are are uh, they don't have uh, amenities for the tenants like a, a gym or they and they don't have Wi-Fi and all those types of things. And the group that's looking at this deal is saying, "Hey, this is an opportunity for us to acquire this asset and increase the rents, but we're going to make some improvements to it. We're going to at we're going to update the kitchen so that it's." on par with what comparable properties are. We're going to, um, as a part of our business plan and executing that business plan, we are going to um, charge $20 per month for parking. We're going to charge for laundry. We're going to ha have a Wi-Fi fee. We're going to build a uh, a fitness facility that that residents can go into for a monthly fee. And you can see how all of those things ultimately help you increase the value of the property by increasing the net operating income of the property as well. And that is where the business plan and, and, the, and the execution of the business plan really comes into play. I talked about raising capital from investors, which we'll dive into a little bit in, in on the next slide. But in addition to that, they're identifying and managing the property management team, right? So the general partnership group oftentimes is not a group of experts in property management, and they are not the ones managing the property themselves. They are managing the property managers. These are high, these are professional, highly professional people that that in businesses that manage the property. So if your tenants aren't paying rent, the property manager is handling that. They are making sure that you know repairs are getting done. They are making sure that the facilities kept up to um, the highest standards, all of those different types of things. And in addition to that, that the, the partnership group is managing the asset and they are providing routine investor relations so what what is investor relations they are making sure that you know for the for the those that passively invest in in that deal they're making sure that they're informed about where this where the project is how are the renovations going what are um what are some of the obstacles that you uh you uh, 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 ran into during the during the execution of this and you know how are things tracking in terms of the finances has the property been stabilized you know when are you going to receive your your distributions as an investor you know when are you going to get your tax documents all those types of things is what the general partnership group does as a as a part of um, managing this in a real estate syndication now let's talk about the role of the passive investor. The passive investor's role in this is really um, to vet the real estate syndication group. And, and what I mean by vetting is getting to know them, making sure that these are people, one, that you know, like, and trust, but two, do, have they done it before? And do, do they have teams, uh, do they have a team supporting them and enabling them to make sure that when you invest your resources, your hard earned money, that you are, you, you're, you know with confidence that it's going to work out in your favor. And you're going to want to confirm that the asset that they're investing in 
uh, that you would be investing in meets your investment goals. So if you're looking for something to as a tax haven, you know, then you can potentially look at you, you can look at certain types of deals. But if you're looking for something that with uh, with a sort of a blended approach to not only the tax benefits, but also some cash flow and some opportunity for appreciation in the property to participate in some equity, uh, on 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 that pro on that property when there is a refinance or sale, then you're going to want to evaluate those deals that come across your desk to be able to determine how it, you, you know what you are going to invest in, and then you're going to provide a portion of the capital needed to acquire the the property. That's the role of the passive investor. And yeah, it, it is somewhat cushy like the guy in the picture here, where once you've done all the the heavy lifting up front, you've built some relationships, you 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 know the group, you you know now you're just kind of you're you're you know you built relationship and you're looking at deals that are coming across your inbox on a on a on an ongoing basis, you know once you you've done that and you've wired your funds um to the 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 team to begin executing the plan and then acquiring the property and all those types of things then you what you get in return is our ownership shares of the property. You are an apartment building owner at that point in time, just like the ones that you drive around your neighborhood. Someone or, or many people are are taking advantage of of that, for example. And the way that you are compensated for this amongst many, which we'll go through later on, is you will receive monthly um, or quarterly, in many cases, passive ca uh, cash flow distributions from the assets. So I, all those things that I talked about before in terms of the, the business plan being executed and the net operating income being increased, well, all the investors that participated in, the, in that investment are receiving their distributions from that property. And it gets wired directly into the bank account that you provide um, to the investment group um, on, a, on a monthly or quarterly basis. And it's highly passive income you you're not lifting a hammer you are not um you are not calling any tenants you are not dealing with any toilets or termites as they say all this is hands off because the general partnership group and their team is handling all that stuff for you okay so let's talk a little bit more about the benefits of, of real estate investing. And I, I, I like to, to show this because, again, we, you know, some people just think it's, it's uh, it, it may be, oh, well, I, you know, I can own, own an asset like real estate and I just, uh, you know, I'm going to invest for most people think about, you know, uh, those those days back when people were just uh, really gambling and investing for you know appreciation and if I you know everybody's investing in Las Vegas so if I go there now I'm going to throw my money there it's not about that this is about being able to invest in something that's a historically stable investment real estate as as I started off the presentation with has made has made and helped people grow their wealth consistently for generations. It's not going anywhere. People need to have a roof over their head. They don't need to necessarily have any Bitcoin, if I'm making myself clear. But investing in multifamily property is a historically safe and, and stable proven way to create wealth. And it has a, a number of different tax advantages, which we'll talk about a couple here in a moment. Well, one of the my favorite things, or not one of the favorite thing from from real estate investment investing that I believe in and that I uh, why I invest is around cash flow. So when investors, when when you put in your money into a deal, investors will receive a monthly or quarterly passive income distribution for their investments um, based on. Uh, you know, and, and it's directly deposited in your account. So, you know, if you're investing $100,000 into a deal or $50,000 or $25,000 into a deal, you know, your, your cash flow distributions based on the percentage uh, um, uh, projected by the by the partnership group, you will receive a, a, a monthly or quarterly distribution based on that, all totaling up to um, a, a, a specific uh, return at the end of the year and, and throughout the life of that investment. It's hands off, as I mentioned before. 
you're not managing any of the of the issues with the tenants or toilets and all those nightmare stories that you've heard about why people shouldn't invest in real estate and all the, the headaches that it causes well you know hand, this is hands off for you once i once you've done your due diligence on the team and the 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 type of asset that you want to invest in and you and you vetted all those things you make your investment and then you you sit back and you read the reports that from the from the general partnership group that are sent out to you on an ongoing basis to keep you up to date on your investment or in these days in fact it's beyond some some investment groups are you know sending youtube videos of you know doing walkthroughs around where they are with the property so i stay i say um reading the the reports but it could be a number of different ways that they that um, uh, partnership groups keep you briefed on how the project is going on in addition to that, it has exceptional tax benefits. Benefits that include not only the fact that passive income from your investments is taxed at a lower rate than, regu than your regular W-2 or earned income, it's also, um, you know, you, you're also able to offset that passive income through your through what's called, known as a K1 tax filing so your passive income is offset by the passive losses a paper loss on your tax filing that that ultimately are almost make your um make your passive income tax free the and and you'll you'll consult your tax advisor about this when you speak with them uh, about what you learned today and and how you and if this is something of interest to you in the future how when you evaluate different investments that come along your way how that would impact your tax and financial situation appreciation is the next uh great thing about one of the other great things about uh real estate investing and appreciation really is looking at the fact that you know like um you know when like your single family home you when you purchased it you put you put a down payment into it you that property you made some improvements to it or maybe you didn't do it but just like what's happening over the for all of us who own property uh today have experienced record um uh, you know uh, appreciation in our home values um over the, the over the many years and building that equity up well that happens also in apartment buildings whether it's just through natural appreciation that occurs generally three percent per year on properties or through forced appreciation through some of the things that i was talking to you about earlier such as improving the property by adding amenities improving the um the 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 units you know renovating them entirely or in part all those things are part of forcing the appreciation or the value of the property it a lot of talk in the news about inflation well real estate in general is a an inflation hedge because when you when when you can partner in purchasing these deals and secure that debt at a particular interest rate that um, that interest rate helps you by securing it for a long period of time while inflation continues to erode away at the at, and debase the the debt that you've secured but you secured it at a particular amount and and that is one of the things that is not um, often talked about from a real estate investment perspective, but this is something that can help you keep up with inflation or or, or beat inflation in some cases. But um, depending on how that asset is uh, is 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 being valued. Now, control. Um, the other thing that that's different here. Some people say, "Oh, well, you know, real estate syndications are like REITs." They're, they're not like REITs. Uh, REITs are, you know, in addition to what you see on the screen around not being able to have access into or, or control into what you're investing in, um, you also don't don't receive many of the benefits that I've mentioned um, before, uh, such as the tax benefits. Those things are not passed down through through you or to you um, as a as a REIT though the REIT is 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 almost like a, a a stock or a mutual fund um, that you would be investing in but now you get to benefit from the power of leverage so as a as a limited partner you know it's all about leveraging other 
people. You're leveraging other people's money. You're leveraging other people's time and you're leveraging other people's um, efforts to be able to, to come and be a part of something that many people um, would not be able to take down or invest in on their own. And by and by leveraging all of those things, you get to participate in, in, in building and in, in investing in uh, a, a, a great investment vehicle. And then finally here, in terms of diversification, investors can spread their capital across multiple real estate syndications. So, you know, you, you will see there are a number of different markets where, pe where people are investing. And oftentimes where we live here, where many of us live, I should say, in the Northeast, it's not in our backyard. It is in places like in the Southeast, the Carolinas, um, Virginia even in some places, uh, Georgia, Florida, the Midwest, Texas, Missouri, Indianapolis, um, you know, in parts of the West, Arizona, Nevada, um, Idaho, even out there is a, is a great art, great markets. But being able to invest where it makes sense from a where where there's great economic um, principles in place and, and and economic development going on, there are, is positive in migration, meaning there are more people moving there than leaving there. Again, think about what's happened over the past few years. How many people in your circle have you heard? I'm going, moving down to Florida. Or I'm moving down to Texas and I'm moving to the Carolinas or Georgia or name a place somewhere down south where they, especially the pandemic helping to accelerate that where people can work from wherever. And if I can take my California salary, for example, and move to Phoenix or Tempe, Arizona, and pay you know a fraction of the cost and not get caught, you know, not get a uh, 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 taxed to death, or then I, I might do that. And so that's what what that's doing is that's making those markets really solid investment opportunities. So just for context, there wanted to kind of give you an, a, a thought about you know what just you you can invest in multiple different syndications across different markets. So it, while there are many um benefits as i just highlighted there are also some risk you should know that you know the challenges and risk of, of real estate syndication is who you choose to invest with you know there there some people are more um uh, aggressive with their underwriting and the deals that they would take on than others that may not line up with your investment philosophy so you want to you want to understand that from the investment group that you would be partnering with um it, you you want to make sure that you're investing once you do that that you're investing with an experienced team and that they have experience around them you know, do they have do they have coaches and mentors do they have um so solid property management have they have they taken down deals themselves of course um have they you know have they um you know in some cases have they you know gone full cycle have they dealt with certain situations um you know those are types of things that you want to understand um you know before placing your your money with an investment group when, when then of course you want to be able to um really understand um you know the, that investment you know opportunity that that is in front of you you know so again does that meet or align with your investment uh philosophy and if so okay things are turning in your direction if not there will be other deals that 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 do pique your interest and it's important for you to be able to to know that so so all of this sounds nice but you but there are some eligibility requirements for investing in, in real estate syndications, and I'm going to go through a, a few of them because this is this is uh, this is the the key. I'm going to go through the the key aspects of of your eligibility for investing in a real estate syndication. And first and foremost, you know you you're you're going to want to have a substantive uh, relationship with the sponsor, and part of that. Um, we'll, we'll get into in a moment, but you and, and you in some cases you are you must be a not in some, but in all cases you must be a accredited investor or a sophisticated investor. So let's talk about what those are. So to be classified as an accredited investor, you must have uh, an mm -hmm. annual income of at least two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand um, with the spouse. Um, and to to meet that basic financial uh, threshold, to meet that basic fi financial threshold, 
alternatively, you could um, have a net worth that exceed a million dollars uh, also classifies it an, an investor as quote unquote accredited according to the SEC and we'll get into some of these specifics because some 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 may be like oh man well that might not work out for me but let's let's dig a little deeper many real estate syndicator syndications are also available to sophisticated investors so what are sophisticated investors sophisticated investors are investors that must have a high uh, in-depth knowledge and, exp and experience making them eligible to become passive investors um, this is because they can really understand the investment benefits and risks that are put in front of them based on you know the the prospectus that's that's put in front of them to understand okay this is a good deal and this or this is not a good deal and basically this is the our government making sure that investors are protected um from uh from bad actors and 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 uh that that are out there just trying to get money from folks and so in terms of the the rules that govern syndicated investments there there are really uh there's really a, a key some key rules that i want to highlight here for us as a part of this presentation so first and foremost you know real estate syndications are considered securities um, and this is based on the act the, the securities uh, and exchange commission securities act of, of 1933. so basically the the idea here is that raising funds for syndications is equivalent to issuing securities and so it's under our federal law and you know what you need to know about this is that you know in some cases an offer to sell uh, uh, the offer or a sale of a security must must be either be registered with the sec or satisfy certain requirements in order to meet the registration exemption and those exemptions are what i'm going to talk about here in a moment because these are the types of investments that are most likely going to come across your inbox when you see them and those are rule 506 of regulation d and so it provides two specific exempt exemptions which i'm going to go through here in a moment one is rule 506 b and the other is rule 506 c so let's talk about what rule 506 B is. So under this rule, syndications can raise any amount of money from unlimited accredited investors. However, these offerings must meet the following requirements. There's no general solicitations or, or advertising. So what that means is that, you know, if you're seeing if you're seeing some a, a solicitation, someone's hey, you know, proactively reaching out to you, or you see the advertisements on social media, or you see um, uh, you you see a, a banner on a website to click on, you know that that's not a 506B offering, and if it is, then that 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 group is gonna might be find themselves in some hot water. There, there should be no more than 35 non-accredited investors um, in uh, in a 506B offering. The non-accredited investors are required to have what's what we talked about earlier around having sophisticated knowledge of the investment transaction, and then the individual who raises funds for that for that offering is considered a, as a as an issuer and so this issuer excuse me uh, raising the funds from a non-accredited investor they have to uh, they have to follow these rules so th they have to disclose the the uh, provide disclosure documents which is which is something that is provided through what's called a private placement memorandum or ppm which is something that we'll learn about as a part of of our ongoing education in, in this meetup but then the issuer should also be available to answer any questions so when you speak to uh someone or or, or folks on the syndication group with uh, on a deal that you're investing in you know they should be able to answer your questions about about it you know tell me about the business plan tell me about the the market that this is in help me understand a little bit more about you know these numbers or that numbers that investment group should help you under should, should be able to address those questions 
Now, um, when we talk about the rules that govern syndicated in investments um, from a rule 506 C, so we talked about B, now we're talking about C. What you should know here is that all purchasers are considered to be uh, accredited investors. So these are the folks that are that are meeting that um, the standards of the 506 uh, C offering 200,000 uh, um, you know, uh, annual basis or a million dollars or as an individual, 300,000 as a spouse or a million dollar net worth type of individuals. The, the issuer should, you know, needs to take, so the syndication group or the issuer needs to make sure that they take reasonable steps to verify that the, the prospective purchasers that, that are saying they're accredited are in fact accredited and oftentimes you may see that um, you know when uh, they will work with verification companies to um, to secure this information and capture it in a database um, so that you know if, if there's ever an audit or a document confirming an accredited investor status needs to be supplied it can be sourced um, that, that this this accredited investor status can off, off, oftentimes excuse me come from your CPA or your CPA will have someone in their network who can who can verify um, with um, that you're an official accredited investor and supply the letter um, for for you to provide to the um, the issuer or the syndication group for your for your proof, so to speak. And then certain other conditions are are um, need to be satisfied as well. So that kind of covers sort of the, the the rules and how these whole things work and and all those important aspects there. But there now you may say, well, that this all sounds interesting and the the legal stuff that's all that sounds a little bit scary. But but I'm glad that there's someone out there, a group looking after these types of investments. But now how do I go about investing in these things? And I would tell you that what you're doing right now and being a part of these groups and connecting with people that are that are in uh, this meetup and others that you'll see on the on the meetup platform and getting out and talking with folks. That's a key aspect to being able to be exposed and learn about these types of deals. Other, um, you know, being able to build relationships with like minded investors who can help you, um, you know, find deals, you know, say, hey, I'm I'm really invested in are really interested in investing in research or, or in real estate. Who, who have you invested with? Would you recommend them? That's a great fast track way to sort of vet someone based off of someone in your network who's had success with investing with others and to help you um, do the same. You join join these types of meetups, as I mentioned. LinkedIn has some groups as well. Um, you know, there are a number of things in between other activities on Facebook and you know, doing the scroll of death, as my wife and I call it, on Facebook or Instagram. You know, there are a number of different real estate uh, related. Um, Facebook groups that you can join and learn, and there are active discussions going on there about you know from about just learning about investing or you know oftentimes there may be um, opportunities or deals that are being passed or at least relationships built so that you can learn from other operators around who may be offering deals and then attend um attend various different real estate conferences there are a number if anyone wants to learn about any conferences to go to to learn about passive investing or any or, or syndications or any more, you know, please reach out to me. Um, but there are conferences that you can join to meet other investors, to expand your knowledge and just open your mind and, and, and be, uh, become more and more aware of this whole asset class. But beyond the, you know, the how to invest and how do you get in that network of, of these types of investments, then there's the, the question around, OK, well, how do you fund these types of things? Well, naturally, and then the first thing is okay cash money you know cash is is one is a common way for people to invest in real estate syndications but that's not the only way because the uh, some of the other ways that one can invest in a real estate syndication is through their self-directed or solo 401k or 
our qualified retirement plan. And these are this is a vehicle that you control what you invest in, not some uh, fund manager at your company sponsored 401k, but you have the control of what you're investing in, how much you want to invest in it, all those types of things. And there's some other flexibilities that's provided uh, from from that type of vehicle as well. In addition to that, um, there's also um, self-directed IRAs. So it's another type of a retirement plan, but rather than having your Merrill Lynch advisor, um, you know, control what you're investing in from a IRA perspective, you uh, can have, you can get your own self-directed IRA and you can um, choose what you want to invest in like real estate or like other assets that you want to invest in not um, being exposed to the stock market which i read a report yet just yesterday that americans have lost over just in this year alone have lost over three tr trillion dollars in in their retirement savings as a result of you know the the, the paper market game out there and so um you know again i i want to put put it out there that you know what we're talking about real estate syndication here for a reason. We talk about joint ventures that you know you can partner up with with folks and uh, come in and come in as formal partners through your own entity, that legal entity that you would create, and you can also invest in a real estate syndication. And and I alluded to earlier the fact that there you know there is quite a bit of uh, a lot of us. Um, or m many of us may be sitting on a lot of home equity and a famous um, real estate investor that I follow talks about your return on home equity is zero. And he says that because you didn't do anything or none of us did anything to make the market do what it did. You know, it, it did what it did. And many of us, our home values have increased. But if that equity is just sitting there, not doing anything for you then so what so what savvy investors do oftentimes as a consideration is they harvest that equity by doing either cash out refinances and they take that equity and they invest that equity in real estate assets that pay them cash flow and build their equity and multiple other properties and the thing the mindset shift that you have to get get through is that you're not losing your equity you're allocating that equity or redistributing that equity across multiple assets to increase your passive income and build your net work worth excuse me and um, build your real estate portfolio and the other is more the more sort of uh, elastic um, tool is people use their home equity um, to generate or create home equity lines of credit, which is with and they execute the same strategy. The only difference is there is that they have to they will invest in assets commonly that pay them if they invest at a 10 percent uh, uh, annual return, for example, and their interest rate that they have for their um, their home equity line of credit is a six, then the, the delta after that is 4% and they the take home is the 4% until the investment that you made in that home from that home equity line of credit is paid off. So that's some some more sophisticated things that we can talk about what we will talk about as a part of this meetup and learning different wealth mindset things um, and topics. But that's pretty much it when it comes to how you go about funding it. So just in terms of bringing it home here, as I know, we just have a few more minutes. Um, finally, you know, real estate syndication groups here, guys, are they are the team that's going to do the heavy lifting for you. And you're going to rely on them um, to be able to um, find that deal that uh, that aligns with your investor DNA, your investor philosophy. They're going to analyze it and they're going to run all the numbers and you more more deals get thrown in the trash or deleted from the inbox and then then get served up to you. There's a lot of junk out there and there's a lot. The general partnership group's responsibility is weeding through all that and finding the best deals for uh, for their investors to, to come in because no general partner wants to lose their investors money. 
they 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 will structure the deal they will execute that business plan that we talked about to make sure that we can increase the net operating income of that of that property and all of the those benefits get passed on to the investors and a happy investor is a very positive thing and the the that passive investor your role here, guys, is to make sure that um, you 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 invest with, with the with the right GP team, and that you're doing that with not only people that you know, like, and trust, but you make sure that they have the 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 credibility with them um, and surrounding them to make sure that your investment is going to be safe and secure. So that that's it for the presentation. I, I do want to allow for a, any questions or comments, but just before I do. Um, you know, Mike, the contact information is here. If you want to take a screenshot of that or, or you know, reach out to me if you want to, to learn more. This meetup happens every two weeks at 7.30 um, p.m. on Thursdays. Um, and it will generally run to, to about 8.30. And I will post all of the recordings on our YouTube channel that we've created so that you can, uh, you can watch the playbacks or share them with your friends. And, you know, please like and subscribe. So I will stop sharing my screen and, and take on any questions or comments before everyone uh, drops off. Hey, Christopher, the, the, uh, this is uh, Steve. Thanks uh, a lot for this great presentation. Um, it was definitely a, a lot of information and well organized. Question for you. So you had touched briefly on the tax benefits. In a normal real estate investment, you have a depreciation tax that you can, um, you know, you determine the value of the building, not obviously not the land, you can't depreciate land, but the value of the building over 27 and a half years, and yeah. you can depreciate that amount. With this one, with uh, syndication, I heard there's something called cost segregation, That's where right. you can take that value instead of over 27 and a half years, you can do it in year one. So almost, let's say you're investi investing 50,000 in, in a syndication. You can almost, you know, Take that entire fifty thousand and use that as a depreciation in year one, which, which is great because some of these deals only last like three to five years. So year one, you can do that. But I heard that they may be phasing that out. The current administration, like it's like eighty percent next year, sixty. Is that is that true that they're phasing that mm -hmm. out? Yes, you're right. They're, they're what they're phasing out is is the the bonus depreciation. Yeah. So so um, as a part of the 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 tax cuts and jobs act from the the previous administration, there were um, there of course with President Trump at the time, obviously being a, a a real estate investor, you know certainly got some sweeteners in there for real estate investors. And so one of those things was this I this bonus depreciation, which was all the things that you described, plus, um, you know, and being able to accelerate that all in, in year one. They are phasing that out over the next couple of years. Um, so so there's a lot of uh, investors, you know, really encouraging folks to, you know, take advantage of this so that they can, um, you know, you know, take it, take advantage of this uh, accelerated bonus de depreciation. But they're the, the, depreciation from the cost segregation is not being entirely fa phased out it's just the uh the excel the, the accelerated, accel the yeah. accelerated yeah, right. depreciation well that's a huge <laughs> that's a huge text but yeah i, I got you yeah <clears throat> thank but you great question great question thank you. any other uh questions or, or comments Uh, you said every two weeks. Um, this is a great presentation, by the way. First time here. This is awesome. Thank you. Um, you said every two weeks the same link. It, yeah. So there will be a, there a new link will be provided. Um, but general, but then I will have a recurring. So it will be a, the same link for uh, for ease next time. Okay. Uh, do you mind posting your uh, contact information or bringing up that slide again for me? Sure thing. I will post it in the chat. Can I answer any other questions or does anyone have any other feedback or comments that they'd like to, to add? 
Have you invested in farmland syndication or you mostly do uh, multifamily like apartment units? Uh, the latter, mostly uh, okay. multifamily um, apartment buildings. Um, I will tell you that there are definitely some really, uh, you know, attractive things out there for for folks that are interested in um, investing in these types of uh, real estate assets, whether it's multifamily um, or whether there's a there's a lot of business going towards self storage. Um, yeah. you know, facilities and, you know, but for me, the, the reason why I believe very strongly in, in multifamily goes back to the, w the way I started the presentation, and that is someone will always need a roof over their, ha their head. Yep. You know, so people may not always need a self storage facility. And when I right. think about my investment philosophy and, you know, being conservative with my investments, I think about you know what are you know, what are the ways that I'm going to protect my money and it's those things that people need and I, and I and I and I talk about you know people do not need uh bitcoin it's sexy and people like it but they don't need it right. but I will need a roof over my head I will need um you know to your point about farmland and those types of things you know people we need agriculture we need to supply our population and populations throughout the world with food and resources. So right. that too would be something very much so that I would be interested in um, pursuing. But in terms of my focus, it is in multifamily. And farmland, you can't, it can't grow anymore. It, you know, there, there, there's no more farmland, you know, to, to farm out, to, you know, to agri. So you have to, you know, the price has to go up. But also what I like, I like about the apartment is you're right. You have to have a roof over your head and you either buy a house or rent. Those are your only two choices. That's and the right. market right now with the Fed increasing the rates, you know, it's going to be more of a challenge for folks to purchase right now, you know, over the That's next few years. So this, I mean, it's almost like a perfect storm. Like there's always a silver lining. Yeah. The economy, inflation, those are all negative, but this is a positive, this investment because, uh, because people are going to start, you know, more people will start renting. And if you can get into a, a deal where you said something earlier, you know, where the the comps are are higher than what this you know particular deal is, then it's only going to go up. You know, so if you can get in that area before the rents are increased, you know, it's just like a win win. Steve, that's such a great point, and that that's exactly um, what you're describing is, is exactly what it, what is happening out there. Um, and and people are 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 able, you know, if some savvy investment groups are able to take advantage of this um, because again, they they are really thoroughly researching those markets and where where they're investing. And it, and it, and the market selection, guys, is something that's critically important here. You know. You know, we we when you think about where you want to invest, you want to make sure that all the cards are in your favor. And you know, are the how are the how is the economic situation? Are jobs moving there? Are they move, leaving there? You know, how are the demographics going? Are people is is it positive in migration or are people fleeing? You know, I think I, I live in New York and you know I, I it's it saddens me, but yet yeah, more people are leaving New York than coming to 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 New York, and so you know because of you know certain favorable you know pol or policies that are not in the favor of investors and across all fronts, and as a result of that, all those different types of things, and you know being able to uh, in, invest in in those areas that have all those things that are lined up in your favor as an investor help increase the value of those properties and and that some of that's just natural uh, appreciation as we talked about some of that is uh is that forced appreciation where there are savvy um general partnership groups that are executing business plans to increase the value for their investors to be able to pass those returns off to them but great question great comments thank you uh, Tyler, are you asking a question? Or are you on? You're, you're on mute. If you are, sorry about that. Yeah, I do have a question. Uh, thank you for seeing me. Um, I, I know it always depends on the deal, but uh, on average, how much are you investing in these syndicates, um, give or take? I mean, obviously, it depends on the size. The 50 unit building versus X amount of building. What's the smallest deal you've done? What's the biggest deal you've done? <laughs> Yeah, uh, the small the smallest uh, deal that I've done is a forty one unit um, deal, um, and, uh, and um, as a as a limited partner, and 
uh, a passive investor. And then the largest um, deal that I've done is uh, 100 and or no, 278 units. And um, the investment across those across both of those, um, for example, was this was the same. I'm putting it 50k, and so you know it depends on what the minimum investment uh, um, uh, cr criteria is for that investment group, and then it may be a 100k minimum investment. Um, it may be 75, but generally speaking, the sweet spot that I've seen in terms of the investments that I've been looking at ha are have been I anywhere from 50k and up let me put it yeah. that way yeah yeah uh i i asked because i actually manage a portfolio of um short-term rentals and we're actually just getting involved in uh syndicating as well uh and, and we're now syndicating our second deal um and it's a 43 unit um multi-structure complex in the poconos outside of Pennsylvania. i'm sure you know the poconos oh, right yeah. Yeah. Poconos is, is, is become pretty popular right now. We actually manage about 30 single family homes uh, and other units out there. Um, we're headquartered in Philadelphia, but otherwise um, syndicating this deal, I'm more so on the uh, making the deal and the vision happen. Um, but my partners are, are have a, a couple of years on me, are more experienced in the field, connected with investors. So they're garnering the cash and the money um, and setting the deal up on the back end. Um, but otherwise, I've been able to uh, luckily uh, have the opportunity to kind of draw the vision out from the ground, get together the project manager, the GC, the renovations, put together the budget, things like that. Um, but otherwise, I have kind of the uh, overview that I've that I've been sending out to um, friends, families, whoever it is that are looking to you know invest, who are sophisticated investors who have invested with me before, um, and. and uh, I, would you mind poking a few holes in it if you, if you don't mind? I'd be happy to, Tyler. Yeah, yeah. I, I dropped my information in the chat. I'd be happy to connect with you on that and you know share yeah. my insights and and uh, and learn from you also. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Awesome. Well, I want I want to be respectful. I know we're just a few minutes over. A lot a lot of great comments, great questions. Um, just for anyone else, before we close out, I want to give you an opportunity to throw out any questions. If you do have questions, again, um, my uh, contact information is in the chat. I will circulate uh, this um, present. Excuse me, this recording to everyone so that you can have it for playback. Um, but please do feel free to to reach out to me. I really appreciate everyone's uh, time this evening, and I want to wish you a, a good night. And uh, we'll talk soon at the next one. Excellent. Thanks, Chris. Great job. Thank you.